Hey guys, it's Ben here, and these are my five players that Liverpool must sell this summer. So the first of the five players that I think Liverpool must sell this summer is Mamadou Sakho. Now this guy had a great spell at Crystal Palace last season, but as we've seen when he's been at Liverpool, he just cannot cut it at this level. You know, he signed in 2013 for a big price tag, there's a lot of expectation on him, having arrived from PSG for 18 million. He was in that 2013-14 side that nearly won the league, of course, but since then he's never really been able to kick on in the Liverpool shirt. In 14-15 he was very error-prone, and from then on his attitude's not been right, hasn't been able to get on with the manager, his consistency hasn't been there. This season, on Twitter in particular, whenever things go wrong with Lovren and Matip or Clavin or Lucas, people are always f***ing tweeting about, about Mamadou Sakho as if he's never been at the scene of a crime when one of these catastrophic defensive performances have happened. One of these really horrendous displays. Well, he was at the 6-1 at Stoke. He's been there when we've been really badly beaten and he's always been error prone. He's always been, looked shaky on the ball. I know people probably look at his distribution as, as a strength, but for me, it may be okay, but he just does not look comfortable with the ball at his feet. He's not a man I can trust in the tackle. He gives away silly fouls. He just doesn't look as if he's all there defensively. He's got a great strength. He's got a great presence. And at Palace, he's been very good. Made a lot of great last ditch tackles and he's really been a linchpin there, but at Liverpool, he's never been able to quite cut it, and he's not a man that I would trust, even as a third or fourth choice. So for me, he is one of the guys that have got to go. Okay, the second one is Ragnar Claven, another centre-back that needs to be got rid of, quite frankly. He came in in the summer for a small fee, just as cover. He ended up playing a lot more games than you'd have hoped. He's been really frustrating. He came in and looked, looked the business, looked like he knew what he was doing, his experience, he's got over 100 caps, but how it's turned out for him, he's just been found out in February, just found out. I could think of the Stoke game away from home. There have been a few occasions where he's just been too sluggish, not been tight enough marking. He's just not quick enough, not strong enough. He just can't deal with the best strikers in the Premier League. He may have done it once or twice. I do remember him having a good uh, Merseyside derby at Goodison Park. Other than that, he's not a guy you can trust. No matter who he plays with, it's just can't seem to form a good partnership. He's played a lot of games. He's played about, I think he made 15 league starts for Liverpool, which is far more than he'd have anticipated. But I think his time's up. Fair play to him. He's come in, done an all right job as third or fourth choice. Played a lot of games, but I think even Lucas is probably a better option at centre back than him. I think Ragnar Clavin, his time is up. Okay, number three is Alberto Moreno now. He's been more of a comedy figure at Liverpool. I mean, that moment at West Brom away when he missed the open goal, I think we all remember that one. That's probably the last memory we'll have of Moreno as a Liverpool player. I mean, he's had his moments. The goal at Spurs in his first season, what a goal that was, and it really thought we were going to get someone to finally solve that left back issue uh, that Liverpool have been played with for years. So many mistakes, so many stupid mistakes from this, this guy. He's Spanish, he came from La Liga, that severe side, that young severe side that were doing so well in Europe and, and domestically as well. He had so much promise, so much pace. He's got a good look, he's got a proper fullback, you know, that proper Spanish quick fullback look and style. But the guy's just, he's just a fry short of a happy meal. He just doesn't make the right decisions. He's a good alternative to James Milner he's in terms of his pace and gives you something different. But if you're going for the Premier League title, his attributes just don't weigh up when you compare them to Luke Shaw at United or Alonso at Chelsea is a better example. This guy's nowhere in that standard. Liverpool need to sign a left back this summer and Moreno needs to be shown the exit door. Okay, next is Kevin Stewart, the man who somehow in 2015-16 became a bit of a regular at the Liverpool side. And at first he looked okay. Nothing sensational, nothing spectacular just moving the ball from side to side, breaking up play, coming on with 15 minutes to go and there's a lead to protect and just shutting it down. Decent enough player, but that was a Liverpool side that was not really intent on getting anywhere in the league. You know, all their eggs were in the Europa League basket, so Stuart found himself starting in that league side, which was which was bizarre to see, but he did okay. I remember having a good game at West Ham in the FA Cup, and there were a couple others. But this season, I think he made four league appearances. I think they were against Arsenal, Spurs, Chelsea and Leicester, so got the array of teams, and he, he was brought on in those games as well, to sort of shut things down and secure a point or three for Liverpool. Been nowhere near the side since. His stock's still quite high. I think you probably still get a decent fee for him. He's young, he's English. Improved a lot in the Jurgen Klopp in the last 18 months, but for Liverpool, he's nowhere near good enough. You know, he'd be eighth or ninth choice in uh, centre mid. And I know he can fill in other positions, but he's just not got the desired quality. Same goes for the likes of Conor Randall, who I won't obviously mention in this video, but players that just aren't good enough, aren't going to make it. They're getting into that stage in their career now where they need to move on and get games. And so I think a championship move for Stuart would do the world of good. Fair play for his career, but uh, 
He's not a Liverpool player. Okay, and the final one, now this, this is the controversial one. This is one that you know, I've changed my opinion on many a time. It's a striker, a man that I did prefer to Daniel Sturridge last season. For me now, Daniel Sturridge has completely, in the last two games, he's somehow managed to change everyone's opinion on whether he should stay. He just looked a million dollars in those in those two games. Against West Ham, that goal was just staggering. He looked like he had his movement, his sharpness, a bit of pace back. As a consequence of that, and because Liverpool need to sign one or two strikers this summer, I think it's time for Divock Origi to move on. Now this guy was someone I was very fond of in 2015-16, you know, he came in against Southampton, scored that hat-trick, and he has had a few runs where he's got sort of 5-5 five and five or, or similar. He scored in the Merseyside derby. He's not a terrible striker. I just I think he's so different to what Liverpool need. I think he's so different to a Firmino who is just silky, just a beautiful player. He can hold the ball up well. His touch is unbelievable. Origi's just so spiky and green and raw. Like his touch is just horrendous. He's quick. He's, he's powerful. And, you know, a good plan B, as some would say, or something different. He frightens defenders, or you know, he's good in the last 15 minutes. But I just don't think he's got the, the required quality that, or the consistency. I know he's young, but I think that plays in Liverpool's favour in terms of a, a, a fee they could get for him. He's into National plays of Belgium, he's nowhere near as good as Lukaku, but he's, he's in, in and around the squad. Whether Origi can forge a career at the highest level, I'm just not convinced. As I say, he goes through phases where he, where he can bag a few. In his Liverpool side, I just don't see a place when, when he's up front. There are some games where he just, he's just not involved. And I, know, I know that's the same for any lone striker, but him in particular, I feel like Firmino, if he's not in a game, he'll, he'll drop deep and make something happen, or in one swivel or one little piece of link-up play with Coutinho, who has been out for most of a lot of last season, so that kind of nullified for me, you know, but Origi doesn't really have that relationship with anybody. I think you could easily get 20 million for him. I, I like him, I, I like him a lot. I think he's got a great attitude. I want Liverpool to be winning the Premier League, and I don't think Debra Origi is anywhere near the calibre of striker that they need to be having if they're going to be challenging for the title. So I think Daniel Sturridge needs to be kept, of course, for Mino, and then you need to add one or two more that are, of, of a similar mould, a bit more pace maybe to inject, but a bit more panache, which Origi completely lacks. Natural finisher, Origi just misses so many chances, such a frustrating player. I think Benteke suffered from similar things, and he's a player I really like, Christian Benteke, and you know, he's gone to Palace and, and been great, and you know, but I'm sure a lot of Liverpool fans will still not necessarily want to take him back, it's just not right for them. And I think that's going to be the case with Origi, so I think now's the time to cash in on him for him to say his goodbyes. Okay, so that was my five players that Liverpool should sell this summer. I'm going to be doing the five players that Liverpool should sign, but those are the ones that I get rid of. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe and leave a comment, drop a like and everything, and I'll see you next time.